I'm Dave Merrill, co-founder and CEO of Elroy Air. I'm standing here at the San Carlos Hiller Aviation Museum with the Chaparral C1 system that our team has been working on for the past two and a half years. And this is the week when we're able to finally unveil it and show this vehicle to the world. It's on the path to providing express shipping services to customers in humanitarian aid, commercial shipping, and defense logistics all over the world. And this is the next step in that journey. We initially recognized that this new chapter of vertical flight was now upon us and possible. And we took a look around at the supply chain and realized, okay, the electric powertrain is here, hybrid electric powertrain, the software tools to efficiently develop an aircraft to allow us to do this in a feasible, practical way. Um, but we coupled that with a bunch of data that we collected, a bunch of inputs talking to commercial shippers, talking to defense logisticians, people that do humanitarian aid cargo, and recognized that there was actually a really, a really critical need for uh, a vehicle like this that could do point-to-point -point express cargo by air at a cost that is lower than today's traditional aircraft and that isn't coupled to the airport network at all. We recognized an opportunity to develop a system that can go direct from warehouse to warehouse, from warehouse to a business, and bypass the airport infrastructure altogether. So logistics is an enormous global market, $6 trillion worldwide, and there are pressures on that industry to speed up. The shippers need more speed. Shipping is under pressure. Every big shipper that's forward-looking has a group that's looking for the next type of vehicles that can serve express mm -hmm. for the middle mile, for the last mile, for mm -hmm. all parts of this network. And we found very interested, enthusiastic, eager partners in several shippers that we've already formed partnerships with. Some we've been able to announce, some we will announce in the future. And we're gonna create efficiencies and speed throughout their network. The networks that we'll create are primarily hub and spoke where a ship center will have a fleet of chaparrales, will have cargo containers, and so this center will be able to serve a range of destinations within a 150 mile radius around the ship center with autonomous aerial cargo. And these systems will go out and back, operating continuously, picking up the next pod, taking it to its destination, dropping it off. If there's retrograde cargo, bringing that back and then doing it again and again and again. These systems can operate during the day, they can operate at night. It's, we're aiming for a very high utilization every day for these vehicles. Chaparral is designed for autonomy, both on the ground and in flight. So it can autonomously locate a cargo pod, navigate itself on the ground, taxi to the pod, pick it up and secure it, and then take off for its flight. Um, it is designed for a fully autonomous flight, waypoint-based, uh, detect and avoid, ADSB, participating in the airspace, like any other vehicle, every airspace around the world is gonna be a little different. So we've designed it for flexibility and to have a remote pilot on the ground who is acting in a supervisory role, acting as the pilot in command. So our concept of operations, for instance, in the US airspace, in the early deployments is that this pilot will be talking to air traffic control, filing a flight plan, allowing the chaparral to participate in the airspace like any other GA aircraft. Although it does have autonomous functionality, there will be that supervisory pilot until the right frameworks exist to allow the system to fly fully autonomous. We've been working on cargo aircraft for five years. Um, this is the second full-scale demonstrator. We built and flew a first full-scale demonstrator, Chaparral, in 2019, right before the pandemic. And uh, we flew that aircraft up through the vertical flight mode and then had recognized some improvements uh, that we wanted to make to the aircraft uh, design. And so we brought it back to the shop and we started work on an iterated full-scale system. Along the way, we have built and tested all the major subsystems and validated all the pieces that go into this aircraft with extensive test jigs, thrust stand for propulsion, iron bird for full powertrain, hardware in the loop simulation, software simulation, a very comprehensive set of validation exercises along the way. This week, we unveiled the Chaparral C1 that's behind me. 
Uh, we had some nice press come out. We showed pictures of the aircraft. We made a, a small video to come out alongside it. And we showed the world what we've been developing for the past two and a half years. And it's been really thrilling to see the response and kind of a relief to be able to talk about it once and for all. We also announced that we have more than 500 Chaparral systems requested in purchase agreements with our partners across humanitarian aid, logistics, defense, and commercial shipping. So these customers are ready to use the system. We're gonna be working with them as we get systems into production for customer use over the course of this year and next year. And we're looking forward to getting these systems out in the world to do useful service for communities. So this model, the C1, is built to be a flight demonstrator to show uh, and validate performance through the flight envelope. We're gonna build a second aircraft of this same generation, a second C1. That will be also in flight validation, showing, showing flight performance through the envelope. We're doing some additional design and engineering this year, call it design for manufacturability, to create conforming um, articles under our quality system. That'll be a C2, and we'll start to produce C2 units at the end of the year for entry into pilots and trials and customer deployments in 2023. We have already built a partnership with the U.S. Air Force, with the Agility Prime group in the Air Force, which has become the epicenter for uh, electric and hybrid electric VTOL vehicles within the Air Force. So as we expand the envelope on this C-1 vehicle throughout this year, we're gonna be doing that hand in hand with the Agility Prime group in the Air Force. Um, we've also been awarded a TACFI, tactical finance increase to our current phase three cyber contract with the Air Force. So the Air Force is a great early partner and early customer for us for Chaparral Systems. We also announced uh, a few months ago a customer partnership with Air Logistics, which operates humanitarian logistics in 45 countries around the world, primarily with traditional rotorcraft. Okay. So the Chaparral will go into the fleet for Air Logistics and start running missions in austere, difficult to reach places where humanitarian logistics is critically important. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of early deployments that we're working with the, with the first few units that are coming off the line, our partnerships in places where we can validate the system and then get it into service, mm -hmm. while at the same time here in the United States, we are putting the aircraft through the type cert process with the FAA. Chaparral is a lift plus cruise uh, VTOL aircraft. It has a main wing and it has four distributed electric propulsors on pylons beneath the main wing. Uh, those power forward flight. Mm -hmm. uh, they provide redundancy. They also provide some yaw authority when the aircraft is in hover. The aircraft has eight vertical fans for vertical flight as well. And so that's uh, a number that provides redundancy. If one goes out, the aircraft can still complete the mission. The aircraft starts in hover transitions to forward flight and in cruise it uses its 11 control surfaces uh, for control during the forward flight portion of the mission. Um, it also has a modular cargo container that it picks up and drops off uh, to carry payloads. The airframe is, is all carbon fiber. It's a composite airframe which is very strong, very light, very rigid and that was necessary to make sure that we would get the rigidity at the, at the weight budget that we had available to us. And then in terms of power plant, this is a hybrid electric vehicle. And it's designed hybrid electric because we needed longer range than today's battery technology is able to permit or is able to support. And so with hybrid electric powertrain, we have a turboshaft engine coupled to a generator providing the supply side power. That power charges an onboard battery and directly powers the propulsors during flight. So in terms of how the aircraft uses its energy, during the most power intensive parts of the mission, which are takeoff and landing, it's using energy from both the battery and live generated electrical power from the hybrid electric system. And then as soon as the aircraft gets up into cruise mode, it can then recharge that onboard battery to a full state of charge within the first 10 or 15 minutes of flight. So that by the time it's ready to, to execute a vertical landing, it's got a fully charged battery to come down and land. You can see it behind me. The, the aircraft is a 27 and a half foot wingspan. 
it is about 20 feet from tip to tail. It's just over seven feet from the ground to the top of the tail. And it's a 2,000 pound M-TOW vehicle. Cargo capacity is 300 to 500 pounds of payload. Other missions we're looking to explore aside from express parcel and other core logistics include medical logistics. Okay. Um, with the modular cargo pod, we can make variations of that container. For instance, refrigerated cargo containers that preserve a cold chain. And one question that we get frequently is, uh, could you put a person in there and use it for medevac or casevac in a battlefield situation? And we like that idea. It's not the primary use case, but uh, it's something that I am guessing we will explore in the, in the fullness of time over the years. In five years, we will be producing hundreds of systems per year. We will have chaparrals in service and certified with the FAA. So in the United States, around the world, we'll be running missions and we'll be a much bigger team. We will have grown out of our office space in South San Francisco and we will have uh, facilities for manufacturing these aircraft in other parts of the country. Today, Elroy Air is a team of 55 kind, dedicated experts. We have people in uh, aerospace engineering, software, industrial design, shipping logistics, manufacturing operations, people operations, really a, a broad spectrum of skills and talents that are all critical and bringing their best to, to together create the Chaparral system and get it out into the world. Uh, so today we act as primarily as an integrator. We designed the system. There are certain parts of this that are that are very custom, like the airframe, the configuration, uh, the software stack that drives the chaparral, the robotics and the cargo container for picking up and dropping off payloads. Um, for a lot of the subsystems that exist in the world, like motors, engines, we source from what's available in the supply chain and we work with supply chain partners sometimes to create customized or modified versions of products that they're already selling. So um, our approach to manufacturing Chaparral is that we don't want to go full stack and reinvent the wheel on every single component that already exists. We're optimizing for speed to market with a robust supply chain from partners that have been doing what they do for years or decades. And so as we go forward, uh, we will continue to be an integrator at, even as we get into our LRIP phase and then rate production after that. We'll have a, uh, an assembly line where we're producing these vehicles, but key systems and subsystems will be coming in from partners from all over the country. As, as a hybrid electric aircraft, one of the key pieces is the engine, which is up front. So the engine's here, generator connected to the drive shaft. In the center is the fuel tank. And then at the rear is the redundant battery and the avionics bay. Um, on my right, this is one of the eight vertical flight fans. So you can see the, the forward ones are down so that we can preserve clean airflow over the wing. In the rear, they're up. This is one of four forward distributed electric propulsors that carries the aircraft forward in cruise flight and also acts as a, as a yaw propulsor for yaw authority and hover. So the, the key configuration change that we made between 2019 when we flew our first full-scale demonstrator and this Chaparral C1 was we went from a canard design uh, to this kind of high wing, more like a bush plane design. And this is a little easier to manufacture. It has better center of gravity tolerance, so the cargo pod doesn't have to be loaded quite as precisely. Um, and it actually requires less material for the airframe, so it'll be a lower cost system to manufacture. The initial full-scale demonstrator had a single pusher. We moved to distributed electric propulsion, which gives us more redundancy for the forward propulsion, allows these uh, propulsors at the end to be used for yaw authority. So this cargo container is a key piece of the overall picture. The aircraft can localize the container, so it can detect where it is on the tarmac, taxis itself to the container, gets aligned on top of it using our triangulation system with ultra-wideband beacons, and then can reach down with the robotic grasping system, grab the container, pull it up, and secure it to the aircraft for flight. During flight, the container stays affixed to the aircraft via four hardpoint connections. And then at the other end of the mission, after the aircraft has landed, it can taxi to the drop-off location, lower the container, release the container, and then go and 
pick up another one for the return flight in the same way. Vertical flight is the most power hungry part of the mission. So on the way up, the aircraft is gonna be using both the live generated electrical power from the engine and the generator, along with some power from the battery. So it will be drawing down the battery um, a little bit on, on the vertical portion of the mission. And then as soon as it transitions into forward flight, there's a surplus of power coming from the hybrid electric system. And that portion of the mission in forward flight allows it to recharge the battery up to a full state of charge. 